Hi, everybody. I'm Mary Angela Saavedra. I'm the director of the Center on the Hill, and it's time for another episode of Tell Me Something Good. Now with special guests. I'm joined by my friend Joe Valina. Joe, where are you joining us from? Silver Spring, Maryland, right outside of Washington, D.C. Awesome. Tell us about the weather. What's the weather like in Silver Spring? Well, right now it's beautiful. It's been pretty pretty crazy. We had a hurricane come through, so we got a lot of rain, but luckily the wind was was pretty pretty okay. And um, other than getting a deluge that drove both of my kids into the bedroom at like three o'clock last night, uh, <laughs> it's been okay. Nice. Glad you made it through. I see a lot of trees out your window. So like, yeah, that, that yeah. could have been crazy. So glad that glad things were better. Yeah, I want them to stay up there. Not exactly. Here. <laughs> they're good where they're at. It's nice. I got you. Well, for those of you just joining us at home for the first time, I'm going to ask uh, three questions from this game that Atria Senior Living gave me. It is called Story Wise, 144 Thoughtful Ways to Bond with a Fellow Human. I will pick uh, three cards at random and I'm going to mix them up because I like doing that. And, uh, and then we'll ask you to share your thoughts with us at the end after we share ours. So here we go. Without further ado, this is our first picture. Looks like some women on the jobs and they're eating like a lunch, taking a break. And the question says, a nickname and how you got it. So um, I've only, actually I've had a couple nicknames. Uh, when I was really little, um, my family members called me Squirt because obviously I was small. <laughs> and so that was kind of funny. I know how I got that nickname. It didn't last very long. I was only Squirt till I was about six or seven years old. Um, and then in junior high, the only other nickname that I ever really remember having that kind of stuck was um, one that I sort of gave myself, me and my best friend um, at the time, her name was Rebecca, and we wanted to have nicknames. We thought that'd be cool. We're like 12 year old girls and we're like, we need nicknames. And so she decided to call herself Strin, which I didn't really understand until we were way older that Strin was short for string bean because she's from New Jersey. And instead of saying string bean, they say string bean. So she was saying Strin because she was thin and, and I was like, oh never thought that i just thought it was like some crazy nickname she gave herself um i gave myself the nickname freaky which seems a little bit uninteresting when you think about it but um i also wore a lot of really weird clothes i was that girl that like wore the like multicolored shirts and the like just as, as weird and outlandish as i possibly could be that was me when i was 12. Um, and so that was you when you were 22, if I remember correctly. <laughs> also, yes, it stuck with me for a while. <laughs> um, that way you would not be wrong. Um, but that's that that nickname stuck with me clearly through high school. And then about the time I hit college, I stopped telling people that that was something people told me. <laughs> and just let them come to that decision on their own. How about you? Got any nicknames? Well, yeah, so uh, nothing like, you know, skinny or anything like that, but um, I, I grew up in West Virginia, and so everybody down there has some sort of a E nickname, right? And uh, so I am, uh, I think I'm the fifth Joseph Valina in a row, and my son's the sixth. It goes Jose once it gets back to Spain, but um, so we had to differentiate in my house <laughs> when someone, you know, called asking for for Joe and so I was Jody um, my, my dad was Joey his dad started out life as Jose and ended up as Joe on his on his new birth certificate as he had it amended to just Joe so um, so yeah so I, I was Jody for the first oh gosh through uh, sixth sixth grade I think is um, when and I can still tell how long somebody has known me uh, whether or not they call me Joe or Jody. And so uh, I changed it because as everybody knows, there's, there's the girl version of Jody and the boy version of Jody. So the girl version is either I or IE and the boy version is with a Y and I, I was with a Y, but no one could spell my name. It's four letters, but nobody could spell my name properly. So I finally got sick of it and said, you know what, I'm Joe now. And, um, and so that, that's how I went from Jody to Joe, but I still answer to Jody. It's still my name. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, for a little while, people called me Mary, um, but that was, it's very specific to a time. So that's my college friends. Anybody I knew in West Virginia called me Mary. 
and anybody else that has known me outside of that or later than that, it was Mary Angela. Um, but I don't really consider that a nickname. That's just a shortening of my name, <laughs> like a, just a section. Well, I can tell you that I got off easy because most of the people in West Virginia really have serious nicknames. Like my my mother's side of the family has like a pooky and a stumpy. And <laughs> I mean, they're, they're like a million of them. And it's just amazing. It is amazing. And they all know, I, I have no idea, you know, what half of their real actual names are, these uncles, you know, on that side of the family. <laughs> Snooky. Yeah. You know, Penny yeah. was my grandfather's nickname. Penny was his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd say his you name was Joe. And they called him Penny. So <laughs> right. well, everybody's gotta be identified. You know, you yeah. know who you're talking to. Awesome. All right. Uh here's our next question. You're gonna start this one. You see these people, they're all holding the surfboard, maybe. The surfboard, I think, yeah. yeah. I guess across the street. And this says whether you think it's more important to follow your dreams or take life as it comes. Uh, that's, that is a interesting question. I think, um, I, I don't think there's a cut and dried answer to that. Um, but I will say, I, I must caveat that with, um, I, my whole life, I felt like I've been almost handcuffed by options. Like I've had, I've been very lucky in my life to have so many different options of things that I could do. Um, and I'm also a pretty um, attention deficit type of person where I, I get really into something for a short period of time and then I switch on to something else and get really into that. I get that from my mother. I think she does the same thing. But um, so I never really, other than playing music, um, I, I never really had like the big dream that everybody went with, you know, and I've always envied people that did have that like a singular vision that that's, that's because that's how you become like the super ultra person in whatever your field is, is if that's the only thing you care about. And so I never really had that um, other than, like I say, playing music, which I still do. Um, but I never really had the burning desire to be on the road being a rock star kind of thing. So it, it was kind of a mixed bag with me. Yeah, no, that's a great answer. I, I kind of agree. I mean, it's really interesting. I think when I was younger, I would say, like follow my dreams was so important because I was like, I'm going to work in theater. I'm going to do like, this is my dream. I'm going for this. And then, you know, you age and life happens and you realize that like, yeah, that, that dream, while it's awesome is probably a lot harder to attain than you had originally thought when you were younger. And um, in my case, particularly with the arts, it doesn't pay great. <laughs> it's like, it's real hard to make a living um, where you can support yourself. And I've been on my own since I was 19 years old. I moved out of the house to go to college and that I never went back. So, you know, for me, those decisions were kind of shaped by like, can I do this and survive? <laughs> like, is this gonna be okay? Um, so then my dreams got kind of shaped in that way. Um, and, and then I really just kind of started taking life as it comes. And a good example of that is the job that I have right now. This was a you know, if you'd asked me three years ago if I thought I'd be doing this, what I'm doing now um, for the Center on the Hill, I probably would have said no, not because I didn't find it interesting, but just because that, that wasn't sort of the career path I thought I was on. And then this job presented itself to me, life threw it in my way. And I was like, this looks really interesting. And I really like had a very strong emotional reaction to like, I think I want to do this. And then once I got the job, it's like the best job I've ever had. And now I can't imagine having wanted to do something else and I still get to be creative and I still get to do artsy things and that's great. So I'm still fulfilling that, but it was definitely a situation of let's take life as it comes. Um, well, as it's well interesting, as you know, how, how life does that because I, I, I now work as in, sorry about the dinner's ready, I think. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I now work as an uh, executive for a nonprofit agency downtown. And I mean, you know, when I graduated from high school, I didn't even know what an association was, you know what I mean? And now I'm certified in it and everything else. I have a degree in it and I really enjoy it. I mean, it turned out to be something that, that is very fulfilling, like you say, and, and I've enjoyed, I've turned it into a career. I mean, that's, that's the focus of my career now. And so I think that, like you say, there, there's, there's a lot to be said for the whole taking it as it comes and seeing, because, you know, the, if you just look at the options that are in front of you at any given moment, it could be totally limiting. You don't really realize that until something yeah. else comes along. Yeah, comes along. I agree. Totally. All right. So our last question, here we go. Here's our picture. These three gentlemen 
uh, <laughs> conversations. Doing a deal, about. doing a deal of some yeah, kind. Of some something. And this question says, under what circumstances, if any, is it acceptable to lie? And my rule of thumb is always if it's gonna like hurt someone's feelings. <laughs> Like, like I, if, if it's, if it's going to hurt somebody, like, then I'm probably going to lie. Um, and I don't mean like, you know, lying because I'm like trying to keep something from someone, but it's like, you know, someone shows up in a hideous dress. Well, I'm not going to say, whoa, that dress is hideous because that's the truth. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be like, wow, you look great. Um, another example I like to use is I see a lot of plays, you know, I've got a lot of actor friends, people who are in plays. Um, and you don't want to tell them that that play was awful, even if it really was. And I have seen a lot of awful plays. And I usually, I have a play partner that I go with, a guy who goes to see shows with me a lot. And he can't do it. He can't, he can't lie to them that way. So he just leaves. It's like, show's over, he is like gone, like vanished, like ghost. And I'm like, oh, hey, and this person really loved the show also. He had to go. There was like a bus coming. <laughs> like, Great job. Like, you know, and I, I try in those cases not to actually lie. I try to just not talk about the show as a whole and focus on them. You did great. <laughs> you were really awesome. So that that way I don't have to be like, wow, please don't ask me what I thought of the show as a whole. Cause like, we're gonna <laughs> lie to you cause that was rough. Um, but I feel like that's the only real time that it's successful, acceptable to lie. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is a hard question actually. I, I think that it's completely situational, completely situational. Although I will say that I agree with you a thousand percent that unless it's somebody coming to you for real serious, like I need to know for, for real, is this right or wrong? If it will hurt somebody's feelings, I will definitely not, you know, I'll tell them what they want to hear, okay? mm -hmm. you know, especially in things like that. I mean, like you, you know, in the music area, when somebody works really hard on a record or a show or something like that, and they ask you what you think of it, unless they're asking you like for a critical opinion <laughs> on something that hasn't come out yet, I think it's not the time to say, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's not, <laughs> that's yeah. not cutting the mustard. They want validation. And yeah. why wouldn't I give that? Why wouldn't I give that? You know what I mean? So um, it, it's the whole, um, the whole golden rule. You know what I mean? Like do it to others as, as you want them to do to you. And yeah. I wouldn't want somebody to be brutally honest with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there have been times I would yeah, appreciate the less than brutal honesty. It'd be great. But but I try. I mean, I don't want it to sound like I'm a liar. I, I try to be truthful in, in most of the things that I do in life. Um, yeah. I, I think it, what it really boils down to is tact. That's that's kind of the yeah. word that I'm looking for is be tactful about yeah, things. Yeah, that's a good Time and place for, for honesty, right? Yeah. Read the people the that the people that pride themselves in telling it like it is, yeah. I hate those people. They they're <laughs> rude. They're rude, not nice people. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I agree with all of those statements. <laughs> That's great. Which is like their excuse for being a jerk. <laughs> right. Exactly. All right. Well, let me recap our questions for everybody watching. Um, we asked about a nickname you got and how a nickname you have and how you got it whether it's more important to follow your dreams or take life as it comes, and under what circumstances, if any, is it acceptable to lie? Email your thoughts to me. Join the conversation at msavedra at chestnuthillprez.org. That's M-S-A-A-V-E-D-R-A -A -A at chestnuthillprez, P-R-E-S dot O-R-G. And, um, and tell us what you think. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you, Joe, for being with us today. This was great. Me. Super nice fun. You. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great rest Thank of your you. day.